All right, good morning, everyone. As everybody's coming in and gathering their, uh, their seats, I want to welcome everybody to Love Memorial. I think James has us live now, so we're going to start with a, some of our announcements here, too. Uh, first and foremost, don't forget, today is our Indonesia fundraiser. Steve and crew have been working this morning, getting everything ready for that, too. So opportunity for a spaghetti dinner, eat in or take out, $10 across the way. Um, immediately following our worship service there too as well. And Wednesday night meal, you've seen that. I think again, old hat, everybody understands ritual there. Um, meal for this week. Church council uh, is scheduled for uh, this Tuesday, the 28th at 6 p.m. in the TSM room. You'll see that as well. Because we have that church council, we needed to have it this, uh, this Tuesday so we can have our quarterly business meeting next Sunday uh, at 7 p.m. following uh, Sunday evening services as well. Um, you also see the TSM mission trip is still scheduled to be leaving out on the 17th, I believe, uh, with the commissioning services prior to that, and then the uh, bags identified for the needs for those uh, bags for, um, to give out is still in here as well. Uh, prayer request, VBS, uh, on your schedule. If you have not seen that already, please make sure you're scheduled, and I'm sure they are looking for um, people who to support and to serve there too. So it will be the week of July 14th through the 18th as well. So I think that's a quick rundown. Uh, no services tonight, absolute reminder of that too. Uh, Memorial Day weekend. So as we talked about in Sunday School too, strongly encourage you to reflect on, again, the sacrifices of the men and women uh, for this nation as well too, as we celebrate Memorial Day. We live in a country, unfortunately today, that seems more and more removed from connection to our military. Um, I think you're seeing that in so many ways reflect itself in our, in, uh, in our dysfunction, in, in our government in a lot of ways, in our disconnection from our youth with uh, those who've served in the military. So take this weekend as an opportunity to, to not only reflect on those families that are mourning the loss of loved ones again in the past, as we remember Memorial Day, but also the opportunity to share that with your, your family members, share that with your kids, share that with your neighbors. Um, again, the importance of recognizing the, the heroes that sacrificed, uh, that gave all again for us so that we can, uh, we don't have to fight for freedom. Again, those who are willing to fight for our freedom um, have done so in the past, but for us again to, to certainly enjoy the benefits from that too again. So take time this, this weekend to reflect on that as well. So with that, first time visitors, any first time visitors tonight, today, this morning? Seeing none again, welcome. So at this point again, we'll turn things over. Great, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, glad to see you this morning. We've got a nice crowd this morning for our Memorial Day. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's get started with prayer. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful to be here in your house, Lord, this morning. We've, we've uh, got up and come here to, to just uh, acknowledge and give you worship, Lord. We just want to fall down and just worship you. We want to draw closer to you, Lord. Uh, uh, I think each person is here for a reason, Lord, for the word that is uh, to be brought to them today, Lord, through a uh, song or either through word. Uh, Lord, we just um, ask you to be with those who are traveling, Lord, and keep them safe from harm. Uh, Lord, just fall down upon us, Lord, and just have your will and let us move out of the way and let's worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship singing, Here I Am to Worship. <coughs> Start it over then. Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Is it down? Grab your hymn book in front of you. Oh, it's, it's trying. 
177. Oh, you're, gonna, you're not going to want to play that in the <laughs> We'll sing that and then I'll get another one for you. <laughs> There's something about that name. You can do that. All right, 177. singing out such a beautiful hymn. Turn to your neighbor and tell them how much you love them and tell them how glad you are to see them this morning. And if they're a... Uh, uh Page 294 in your hymnal, if you want to find the hymnal, I think the words will be on the screen in just a few minutes. Have thine own way, Lord. We're going to let him take control right here and lead us. the 
be seated. We're going to take a moment to honor our Memorial Day. Good morning. Late last year, um, I stood before you and I told you about Veterans Day and what it meant and what it was intended for. Today is our day of recognition for Memorial Day, so I want to discuss that day. Memorial Day is observed on the last Monday in May and was originally set aside as a day for remembering and honoring military personnel who died in the service of their country, particularly those who died in battle or as a result of wounds sustained in battle. On this day, many Americans observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials holding family gatherings and participating in parades. What if the original, uh, the origination of Memorial Day is the reason they do that. Because on May 5th, 1868, General John A. Logan, who was leader of the Organization for Northern Civil War Veterans, called for a nationwide day of remembrance later that month. He was quoted as saying, the 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet, churchyard, in the land. The date of Decoration Day, as he called it, was chosen because it wasn't the anniversary of any particular battle. Memorial Day, as De Decoration Day gradually came to be known, originally honored the only those lost while fighting in the Civil War. But during World War I, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict, and the holiday evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars. For decades, Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th, the date General Logan had observed. But in 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which established the last Monday in May as Memorial Day and also declared it as a federal holiday. As I said, on this day, many Americans observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries, memorials, holding family gatherings, and participating in, par participating in parades. Locally, you can visit the Wayne, Memorial, or Wayne County Veterans Memorial, which is a living monument erected to honor veterans who sacrificed their lives in the line of duty. And this site includes a memorial wall, a pavilion, the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base Veterans Memorial, Wayne County Vietnam Memorial, a Wayne County Granite Map Fountain, and an uh, illuminated flags. But there are also many other cemeteries in our own county and city um, that have designated areas uh, for honoring our fallen and those that have served. So as a remembrance of those who died, I want to take a moment and talk about November 11th, 1918. This is the day the world celebrates as the end of the World War I. According to a list compiled by North Carolina Department of Culture and Natural Resources and President of the North Carolina World War I Centennial Commemoration Committee, there were 29 North Carolinians that were known to have died on that day, the very last day of World War I. Of those 29, five were designated as being from Wayne County. Private, first or Private Andrew Best was from Goldsboro. Private First Class James Hill was from Goldsboro. Private James G. Summerlin was from Mount Olive. Private Grover C. Wiggins was from Goldsboro. And Private Major Williams was from Seven Springs. Now there were, of course, many others that died after that day because we were still had to stand down operations and continue to serve there until the summer of 1919. But these individuals were the ones that died on the day that it was declared over and ended. So today, as Brian alluded to a while ago, I ask that you say a special prayer of remembrance for all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Men, men and women all over the world, they do what they are called to do for each one of you and they don't even know your name. So I ask that you be thankful and lift a special prayer for them and also for those they left behind. 
after having reading that, now I hope I can make it through this song. <laughs> I sang this song for y'all a couple of years ago, a few years back, but it is a, a perfect Memorial Day song, but it's also a perfect song to remember who gave the ultimate sacrifice for each one of us as well. a troubled kid in and out of jail when his daddy said this is the last time I'll pay bill so he enlisted in the army and they sent him to Iraq he was a different man Some people said the army must have whipped you into shape. But he said, that's not the reason that I've changed. Somebody died for me before I even asked for help. Gave his life for me when I couldn't save myself. Cannot live the way I lived Or be the way I was Every day's a gift to me Because somebody died for me Now they fold the flag and attach a silver star As the grieving mother leans against his arm Then he stands before the family And does his best to tell How he survived the night his best friend fell no one who ever knew him was surprised he died that way. He tried to live for Jesus, oh, he always used to say, Somebody died for me before I even asked for help. Gave his life for me when I couldn't save myself. Cannot live the way I lived Or be the way I was Every day's a gift to me Because somebody died for me Now I don't want to waste a moment Of the time that I have left With every breath I'm given God help me not forget Oh God help me not forget Somebody died for me Before I even asked for help Gave his life for me When I couldn't save myself I cannot live the way I live Or be the way I was Every day's a gift to me because Every day's a gift to me because Somebody died for me We'll stand and do one more before we invite Chris up to speak. Not me. Page not, 210 in the me. hymnal, if you want to um, turn to your hymnal, My Jesus, I Love Thee. My Jesus, I
receiving. This morning we have the honor of having Chris Carson come and speak to us this morning because we all know the tollers are out this weekend. So let's welcome Chris. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, pray for Nora, Nora Sasser. Uh, Rod brought her name to me. Uh, she's right as we speak in surgery. Is that right? Uh, emergency surgery. Uh, the mother-in-law of Mike Ulrich. So uh, let's, uh, let's bow our heads. Father God, as we sing about our love for you, it's only because you first loved us. And uh, so uh, we call on you because we know that you do care for Nora and we ask that your hands would be upon the doctors and nurses as uh, they're um, operating on Nora. Uh, God, that uh, you would uh, bless them. Father, that uh, they, they would uh, truly be uh, guided by you and that uh, through all of this, uh, Mike and his wife they would uh, continue to uh, trust you and uh, know that they are being held by you. We just commit them now into your strong, loving hands. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Larry Walter said that I had to tell you who my mother is. So it's Gene uh, right here in case you don't know. Um, uh, some of y'all uh, may not know me. Uh, I was a member here a long time ago in the 70s. Uh, moved away and um, uh, joined the Army, was um, a chaplain, I retired as a chaplain in the Army, and so seeing those pictures, uh, I can uh, uh, really feel and, and relate uh, to uh, what's happening there, uh, being, being in Iraq and having to give memorial ceremonies for soldiers that uh, uh, died um, serving their country, it uh, means a lot to me. And I appreciate that, Chris, uh, for you, uh, for you doing that. Um, I, I heard a, a I heard a, um, a story a couple weeks ago. A friend was telling me about this couple. They had been married, um, I don't know, twenty or thirty years, but they just weren't communicating, and uh, they were arguing. And the arguments were getting, were building up to a fever pitch to the point where the, the husband, he'd had enough. And uh, he said, that's it, no more, I can't take it. He gets his clothes, packs it into his bag. He's walking out the door, he's at the bottom of the steps. And his wife, she's seething. And she says to him, I hope you suffer a slow, painful death. And he turns around and he said, so you want me to come back? <laughs> uh, some people actually think, you know, if I just had a better marriage, or if I had a better this or I had a better that, then I would be happy. Um, a couple years ago when I was, my wife and I were serving in Greece as missionaries and I was preaching at a church in Athens. And after we would have the message, we would meet with the refugees, the, the ladies would be on uh, one group and the men would be in another group. And the person who started the church, he, he wouldn't come around that often. He was a Korean man, godly man. But Every so often he would come around, and uh, in our group, he was sharing the gospel with this one particular uh, refugee from Afghanistan. And, uh, and it was, of course, being translated from Farsi into English and English into Farsi. And the, the refugee was saying, uh, you know, I, I've, I would consider following Jesus, but I just have too many problems. Um, if, if they could be solved, then I could think about following Jesus. 
as I think about that, really, that refugee is not really all that different from many of us in America. Uh, we have this belief, you know, I, I, I cannot follow Jesus right now because of my problems. They're, you don't understand, they're just too, too difficult. If, if I could get them solved, then I'd be willing to follow Jesus. And I, I think that they're, they're even followers of Christ who kind of have that similar attitude. You know, I, I could... Uh, I could have this peace and joy, and I have already decided to follow Jesus, but I just can't have this contentment and, and a peace of mind because I, I just have these problems, and, and if they could be solved, then I could have peace and joy. All the things that are happening in my life, you, you just don't know they're so hard, they're so painful, it's just not possible unless my circumstances change. That's the only way. But what does God say about this? How can someone really experience joy in the midst of hardship? Because we all face it. I do, you do. Some may be worse than others. But is it, is it really possible to have joy in the midst of trials? If you have your uh, Bible, I'm going to ask you to turn to Acts 16. And uh, if you're able to stand, then, um, then I invite you to stand while we read. This is, um, we're going to read from verse 22, but just to kind of give you a little context, Paul and Silas are in this town of Philippi, or Philippi, uh, and they're on their way to the place of prayer, and this uh, slave girl's been following them. And uh, it's interesting because she's been really uh, verifying their presence. They are actually bond servants of, of God. That, um, that they're proclaiming the way of salvation, but, but Paul gets annoyed, and he casts out this spirit inside of her that allows her to do this. Well, see, it's making money for her owners. Her owners don't like it. They uh, grab a hold of Paul and Silas, take him to the authorities, and um, this is where we take it up in verse 22. The crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes of them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. When they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into, prisons, into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And, these, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. And he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized, he and all his household. And he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. You can be seated. Verse 22 says that Paul and Silas were, were beaten. Uh, depending on your translation, uh, it might say flogged. Um, beatings were, are actually pretty common with the refugees that I spoke to in Greece. If, if uh, they're coming from Afghanistan 
and trying to make their way to Greece, they, their goal is to get to Turkey, and to get to Turkey, you have to get through Iran. Um, and you either go through the desert or you go through the mountains, and either way, it's hard. And so by the time you finally make it to somewhere on the west coast of Turkey, close to, to get to uh, Turkish territory, um, it's very likely that you will be arrested by the police, but not just arrested, uh, you will be beaten. Now that's something I can't relate to. Uh, some, some of y'all maybe can, I don't know, or you know of someone, or if you've, you've, you've read about that, uh, and, and, and you know what that's like, but, but they can understand how that feels what it was like for Paul and Silas. And my, my Bible commentary says that they were uh, beaten with long rods, so you can imagine how painful that would have been for them. And they're not just put into any part of the prison. They're, they're put into the inner part. So depending on what time of year it was, it was, uh, of course, the darker part, but it's also either colder or the hotter part of the prison. And their, their feet are secured uh, with, with heavy wooden blocks. Now, we don't know what time the beating took place. Just for sake of argument, let's say noon. You know, right in the middle of the day. Verse 25 uh, says that it was midnight in verse 25, it was midnight when something was about to happen. Um, Twelve hours later. And so I, I want you to kind of picture this in your mind. You can, you can see Paul and Silas there sitting in the inner prison. Their back has got whelps on it. Their lips are swollen. Maybe they're, they're, they've got a black eye. They've got bruises on their head. Arms have got scrapes. Um, they, they can't really sit back and lean up against the wall because, you know, you're leaning up against where they were beaten on in their back. No matter what position they're in, any way they move, they are feeling pain. Their problems haven't been solved. They're, they're alone in this dark place, hurting all over. When we're faced with difficult hardships, is it possible for Paul and Silas to have joy? They, they, they do something Paul and Silas choose to do something that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, when things are going your way, it's, it's, um, it's normal to have a you know, pep in your step. Wow, this is, everything is going for me. Gosh, I'm just so glad it's all working out. In your attitude, how you act, in the words you say, you come home and you hug your wife or you... Uh, say how your kids are doing, or you pet the dog. But when things are not going so well, you say things you don't want to say. Maybe you kick the dog, maybe you don't kick the dog. But you react negatively. That's, that's human nature. But in, in verse 25, you correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I had a, a, my Bible was somehow, the printing press was off on it, and, but I want you to correct me. If, if, but my Bible says they were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. Is that what your Bible says? After being beaten. Right in the middle of their suffering, they choose to worship. 
They choose to commune with God Almighty, the one who had not left them. The God who was right there. They're, they're praising the one who, who doesn't change no matter what the circumstances are. The God who is alive, who through Jesus Christ overcame death, rises from the dead. He lives in the hearts of every person who has confessed their sins and put their faith in Jesus to save them from their sins. Friends, even when we're dealing with hardships, God wants us to keep looking at him. Keep our minds on, on what he says. I want you to listen to uh, some possible scriptures that I think might have been on their mind. I mean, Paul and Silas, they're sitting there. They, they had to have been thinking of something. Something had to have been on their mind, all right? And the New Testament hadn't been written yet, right? So it had to be the Old Testament. So let me give you some possible scriptures that may have been what they were thinking. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Deuteronomy 33, 27. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Psalm 18. Who is a rock except our God? And then Joshua 1, many of you know this already. Be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dis dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, even in prison. Psalm 27, the Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Zephaniah 3, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. 2 Samuel 20 th 22, 2 through 3, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold my refuge, and my savior. I think they may have been, they could have been thinking about that in spite of their physical condition. They're, they're looking and their mind is set on what God says. But there's one more scripture that I think more than any other scripture, this might have been the one that was really abiding in their hearts and their minds. And if you have your Bible handy, uh, you can read along with me. It's Psalm 16. And as you look at this scripture, you can tell me if you think this is something that they could have been um, meditating on while they were in prison. In spite of their hardship, they had this passage in their hearts and their minds. Psalm 16, 7, verses 7 through 11. I will praise the Lord who counsels me, even at night. It was midnight, right? It was midnight in the, in the prison. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Hmm. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. And listen to this part. You will fill me with joy in your presence even in the prison Paul and Silas could be in the presence of God see they were focusing not on their circumstances not on their their wounds their body aches all their all their bruises they were looking to God their their mind is set on 
what he says. Now, don't be fooled, friends, into thinking, well, that was Paul and Silas, that was back then. That doesn't apply to me. It does. I believe we can find joy even in our struggles, even when our problems are not solved. Even when we don't get the answers we want. Even when we're alone and our, our heart is hurting. We can find joy. No matter what may be happening in your life. When you're faced with a difficult hardship, keep looking to God. Keep your mind set on what he says. But also, when you're faced with a difficult hardship, be aware that, that you, me, that we can be a witness. I'm talking about to, to folks who are, are not followers of Jesus. The end of verse 25, it says, the prisoners were listening to them. They were listening to Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, they could, they could feel the injuries, you know, all over. Their face, their arms, everywhere. And so you would expect them to be verbalizing it, right? I've noticed the older I get and when I'm around people my age and, and, and I'll, I'll talk about my need, oh, I had this done, I had this done, I'm doing this, and I'm, you know, it's, it's sort of commiserating <laughs> and, and relating to uh, what it's like to get older. Uh, but especially in their case, you would expect them to be complaining, right? Um, the punishment, I mean, that was, that was pretty harsh to be beaten with rods. And, and the prisoners who were already there when Paul and Silas are brought in, some of them who may have been in 20, 30 year, year sentences, I don't know, you know, two more brought in. Okay, here we go. They've all heard it before. They're going to start complaining. They're going to snivel about this and that. They're going to talk about all the places on their body where they're hurting, how bad it hurts. No one's ever been beaten as bad as I have. Then they'll start complaining about uh, when will I be released? Who can uh, come and help me? Uh, I've not been treated fair. This is not right. We did nothing wrong. You know, everybody in prisons is innocent, right? But they, they weren't doing that. You would expect it, but they weren't doing that. Instead, I'm led to believe the way the scripture has it that they were praying but they, they weren't just praying but they were praying out loud and of course they were they were praying to someone that they knew um, they, they were talking to someone who was real someone who who hears them someone who is with them someone who is mighty like no other God who, who knows their needs. The prisoners, they, they learn about this from Paul and Silas's prayer. They learn about it from the songs they sing, the words in the song. They learn who God is and, and how he's the only God that can save you. Yesterday, when I came up to, to visit mom, my uh, daughters came up and, and one of my daughters is a teacher. Um, and she talked about how she was being observed by one of her administrators. I know uh, Jeanette was a teacher. There may be some other teachers amongst us. Um, and so you know what that's like. They have a day scheduled and an administrator comes into your class. They sit in the back. They have a pad and they're writing down your, your strengths and your weaknesses. And then later you have a conference and let's talk about how'd it go. 
Um, and she was telling us this particular administrator was not a believer. But she happened to uh, be talking, or, or he actually, was talking to her about this chaplain because she knew that, uh, or he knew, that uh, Sammy, my daughter, that I was a chaplain. And he actually, he knows me. The administrator knows me because I was substitute taught at that school. Um, and it turns out we were deployed at the same place in uh, Iraq. But he mentioned this other person who was a, uh, a chaplain named Scott. And he wanted to know if uh, she asked my daughter if I knew him. But he, he said something about this guy. He said, Scott is, uh, is somebody who acts like a Christian should act. Now, how does he know that? From rumor? Maybe you've you read about this guy? I think he's been watching. He's been listening. Maybe he's talked to him. And that's something, folks, I think we don't realize is how many uh, people out there who are not followers of Jesus who are watching us and they're listening and they want to know, do you have what is real? Is this God you're serving? Is he, is he alive? Is he really listening? The prisoners, they weren't the only ones listening. There was somebody else who was listening. The Bible says there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. The doors are open, their, their chains fall off, and the jailer awakens. Now, I was thinking about this this, this morning. He may have been asleep or he may have just dozed off, but somehow he was listening. You know, they say that when you're asleep or when you're in a coma, you still hear people when you're, you're talking to them. Uh, somehow he was hearing what Paul and Silas were saying. Um, and, and he wakes up, and he's about to try to, to kill himself. And he pulls out his sword, and, and Paul says, no, 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 don't. We're here. It, it, it's okay. Put, put away your sword. We're all here. And so he... Scripture says he runs to Paul and Silas and he asks them a question. And he asks them because he, because he knows they have the answer. He could ask this question to anybody, but he knows they have the answer. And uh, friends, I believe many people are asking this question. But depending on who you ask, you get a lot of different answers, right? It, if you're going through a hardship, just hang in there. Don't give up. You can do it. Just think positive thoughts, and, and you'll make it. Uh, somehow, uh, friend, uh, it'll all turn out okay. But we know there's only one answer, right? Right? See, when, when other people, when, when folks who are not followers of Jesus, they see us, especially, especially when we're going through a hardship. They're more, I believe they're more prone to listen to you. Their ears kind of perk up as to what you have to say. When we're dealing with trials, people around us, people who know us, they will be asking that question, and, and they may not verbalize it, but, but in their mind, they're thinking about this question. What must I do to be saved? And the response, I, I want you to pay particular attention attention if you got your Bibles open still to Acts chapter 16 to I want you to notice the response that Paul and Silas give to them because what they did not say is believe in Jesus 
Now don't throw me out of the church just yet, okay? Because if you take a, a survey of people right off the street, a majority, yeah, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. I know my neighbor one time, I had been wanting to talk to him and, uh, and, and I asked him if he knew, oh, he's my friend, but it, it takes a little bit more than that. Um, Paul and Silas say, believe in the Lord Jesus. You might be thinking, well, Chris, that's just a little minor thing. But this is important because salvation comes not just when you want to get saved from hell. Because that's, if that's your only motivation, uh, then you're missing the point of, of all of what God has for you. Because it's so much more than that. When you ask Jesus and you come to him for salvation, you're asking him to be Savior and Lord. Plenty of people don't want to go to hell. I don't know, hard, I don't know anybody that wants to go to hell. And so they may say a prayer they may get baptized, but they don't want to go to hell. But they want to hold on to their life. And they're not wanting Jesus to be the leader of their life. So you got a problem. That's why Paul and Silas says, believe in the Lord Jesus. When Jesus becomes the leader, we follow. We receive his forgiveness and he takes our sin away on the cross. We receive new life because Jesus rose again in the new, again in the third day. So when you, when you put your faith in Jesus, friends, your life is no longer yours. That's what it means for him to be Lord. Just a real quick uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 19, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? You have been bought with a price. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Paul spoke this message to the jailer, to his family. They received Christ. They were baptized. Verse 34 says that uh, the jailer was filled with joy. Even though uh, uh, I don't know what happened to the jailer, but they were probably, the, the authorities were probably going to at the least fire him and maybe do something worse to him. But God knows, friends, the hardships you were facing. And he wants you to look to him. He wants you to, you to, to focus on what he tells you in the middle of your struggles to call out to him, to praise him no matter what's happening, and you're going to find the joy, that, that deep down joy that the Spirit can give. And it's, and it's a joy the problem, the problem can't take away. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Others will see that you're responding, and they won't hear you complaining, right? When you are facing a hardship, they're not going to hear you complaining. They, won't, they, they will instead see you keeping your eyes on Jesus who is real, who is with you, who listens to you, who cares for you, is your dwelling place, is your refuge. We're going to close this message in, a, in another minute, but I, I want to ask you before we do, what is your situation? Perhaps you're like the jailer. You, you've been listening and hearing about Jesus for a while. And you've been thinking about it. Um, you've heard it from your family, from your friends, 
maybe your spouse, how, how real Jesus is. And you know that your sins are keeping you away from Jesus. But you know that he loves you very much. And that he has the power to make you clean and take away that sin. Will you let him be Lord? Will you let him be the leader of your life today? Secondly, you may be a believer. It could be that most of y'all are, are followers of Jesus. But, but God is speaking to you because you're, you're going through a hardship. And he's saying, keep looking at me. Keep your mindset on what I say. Not what other people are telling you, but what I say. Don't look around with what's going on. But listen to what I say. I'm going to end by uh, reading Psalm 16 one more time. And then I'm going to pray. After that, I'll be at the front, but I'm going to invite you to come. As I've seen, I come here about once a month to see Mom, and it's beautiful to see how uh, many of y'all come forward, and I know the altar is open. Uh, if you need to release a burden, if, if you need to tell God in a, in a recommitment that you need to keep your eyes on, on him and focus on what he says, and, and to help you to be a witness. If you, if, if you need to do that and come forward, you can. Or if you'd like to speak to me, I'll, I'll be at the front. Well, let's pray. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Oh, Father God, you know us so well. You know the situations that we are in. The, the hardships that uh, these folks are facing. Oh, God, help them to follow the example of Paul and Silas, to hear you calling them to keep continually setting their eyes on you, to setting their minds on what you say to them and not what's going on around them, to help them to see that they are in a, a vital position to be a witness for you. That people around them are listening and watching. God, use them for their glory. May they come to you and say again, yes, Jesus, you are my Lord. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Stand with us as we sing Amazing Grace.
Thank you, Chris, for that message. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bless the food over here that we're having today. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are and what you do. Lord, we thank you for the ones that died for our freedom. We thank you for the ones that have served and are serving now. Lord, we thank you for you sending your only son to die on the cross to save us from our sins, Lord. Lord, we just praise you for that, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we pray for the ones that are sick. We pray for the ones that are home and not here today. We pray for the ones that are going through treatment, surgery. And Lord, we just praise you for getting us through these times, Lord. Lord, I pray for all the ones that are here today. Lord, we all have a need. We all have a problem. We all going through something, Lord. We just pray for your strength to get us through those things. Lord, help us to follow and serve you. And Jesus, Lord, we just pray for the food that we're about to receive today for the Indonesia meal. And Lord, we pray that you bless this uh, uh, ministry. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all you do. Amen.